ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us in this special Black History Month presentation featuring us, Solid Steel, playing some music for you here at the Verdict Jazz Club in Brighton, England. And a conversation also, which we've had with Sterling Betancourt, a legendary figure and pioneer of this beautiful instrument that we play, the steel pan, which is the national folk instrument of my father's homeland, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Paul Cherry, and today I'm delighted to say I have with me Mark Cherry, my cousin, and Rule Richardson from St. Kitts. You didn't fly into the St. Kitts today, did you? No, no probably not. But anyway, there's some Rule from St. Kitts. And uh, yeah, the first tune that we're going to play for you is a tune called Ping Pong Samba. And it was written in the early 1950s by a dear family friend of ours, an important figure in the introduction of the steel pan to England, Russ Henderson. Would you like to, I think we should stop, why don't yeah. you introduce yourself? Yeah. My name is Sterling Betancourt and I was born in the island of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, I saw many of you must have heard of Trinidad and Tobago. And my first recollection when I was about four or five, I used to play the Tambo Bambo which is bamboo that you beat, and there used to be tambo bamboo band. And from that, the steel band arise after the war, 1945. I was about 15 years of age, and I continued with the steel band. In 1951, they formed a steel band by the name of TASCO, Trinidad All Steel Percussion Orchestra. Now, in those days, it was the infancy of the steel band. And they used to have a lot of clashes with the steel band. And you, you can ask me about the clashes. Okay. Well, before we even get to that, Sterling, of mm. course, you are a pioneer mm. of the steel pan. And actually, you played on a recording of the song that we just played, which is called Ping Pong Samba back in 53. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. 1953, I met a chap by the name of Russ Henderson and your dad, which is Ralph Sherry, mm -hmm. and we played ping pong samba. Now, ping pong was the name of the instrument when it first started because it was ping pong, ping pong, so they call it a ping pong. And they said that I was the wizard of the ping pong 
which I don't think was true. I think it was very true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, and we did that recording, and it was very famous. In 1953, that was the first steel band uh, recording. Mm. And it was the first time that the, I came to England with the Tasco steel band. Tasco, what did that stand for then? It stands for Trinidad All Steel Percussion Orchestra. And they formed that band to come to the Festival of Britain in 1951. And they chose members from different steel band. Uh, it was 12 of us to form one steel band to bring the culture of the steel band to Britain. Uh -huh. But sadly to say, it's only two of us alive today. Fortunately, you're still here to tell the story. Yes, yeah. that's right. Maybe My, could, could, myself mm. and the chap by the name of uh, Anthony Williams, and he's in Trinidad now. <laughs> well, it all started with pots and pans, different, and they just hit it with a stone sometimes. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they get a little and they said, Oh, we get a, a tone there. And they, they, and they, they start ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping mm. pong. And it developed from there. I think back in Trinidad, you were part of a band called Crossfire. Can you tell us a little bit about yes. that? Well, the beginning of Crossfire, I was with a band called Tripoli okay. first. And after the carnival, we had a, a sort of band party. And it had a chap by the name of Granville Seeley. He was a tuner and I was a tuner as well. But somehow, he, he did he would take a dislike to me. And he asked me to, <clears throat> to have a drink, pardon me. And I said, I don't drink. So he threw the drink on me and said, Well, you don't drink, well, you better wear the drink then. <laughs> so then we said, Listen, I'm going to form my own band now. And we're going to call it Crossfire. We went to the cinema that night, and the film Crossfire was there, and we said, We're going to name us. Band Crossfire. Okay. And that was when I got picked from Crossfire to join Tasco. Okay. So how did the band names of that time, how did those names come about? Well, it was during the war and all the bands took war names like Invaders, Casablanca, Red Army, Tokyo. Yeah. And it were all war. Yeah. And I'm telling you, they were used to fight like the in the real war as well. I bet too, yeah, the band the battles and violence between the bands yeah. must have been a bit of a threat. Can you tell us about some of the clashes, the steel band clashes? Yes, I remember 1946. Carnival kind of night. I was with, with um, that that well, I was with Tripoli then, and we were going in Trump play. And Tokyo and Invaders clash and the Back of the band, I got and it came into Tripoli, and I have to run. And I run inside the house, and a, a woman said, Come in, Sonny, because I was about 16. Come in and think, and bottles and things. Think. And when I heard it, it quieted on my open, and I gone down the road. That was a steel band clash. Uh huh. Well, in tribute to those good old bad old days, the next mm -hmm. tune that we're going to play is Lord Blakey's Steel Band Clash.
the United States joined the Second World War in '42, mm-hmm. you weren't even in your teens then, were you? No, I was, I was um, 12. Oh, okay, but can you remember mm-hmm. the influence of Americans in Trinidad at that time? Yes, the, the American. <coughs> pardon me. The Americans had a base in Chagaramas and the town of Point Comana, that's where the Americans used to go with the prostitutes and, and, and the clubs and the drinking, rum and Coca-Cola. Sounds fun. And Lord Invaders made the, the song rum and Coca-Cola. Uh-huh. Working for the Yankee dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see what that's about. <laughs> and, and if you have one a tune, you can play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, left, the, the, they left these oil drums behind. And it's people say that that's kind of the, the origin of the instrument, but these leftover drums. Is, is that actually true? No, no it's, it's not really true. Oh, okay. They, they had um, uh, the, the shell and, and BP and all those things, and we used to go and buy drums from them. But sometimes we used to go and steal some drums from the Americans uh-huh. as well. So, I mean, the, the, it's not there that, that um, right. really... Okay, that's a little bit something that yeah. we get, get quite right. So the next tune that we're going to play is Lord Invader's mm-hmm. Rum and Coca-Cola from 45, yeah. where he sings about, um, obviously, the, yeah. in, the American troops in Trinidad. Right. So the um, as, I, as I remember, the Andrews sisters made the song a hit in the States. Yes, and he got a lot of money for that because he sued them as well. Did he? Yes, he okay. sued them for, and he got a, a lot of money. Okay. Was it you or Lord Kitchener? Lord Kitchener. It was, huh? He came on the Windrush uh-huh. um, in 1948 mm-hmm. um, from Jamaica because he went to Jamaica and from Jamaica he took the, um, the Windrush and he came. Yeah, he uh-huh. came two, two, two years before me. So I, 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 I played on many tunes that he made in, in London. Oh, did you? There's one called Love in the Cemetery. Which I played Timbales on. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that that's on YouTube as well. Okay. You, you can check that out. I will check that out myself. A bit Love, later. Love in the Cemetery, where he went with his girlfriend in the cemetery, and, and, and uh, the, 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 he was on a grave, and, and he see, and it's God. And when he got outside of a chap, he met a chap, and he fell asleep. He related the chap, he was in the cemetery, and the chap said, Well, you're a wild old man. I would have done that if I was alive. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very, it's yeah. very nice. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So the next tune that we're going to play is, I'm sure, well, it's a tune we both know very, very well. It's Old Lady. So that's a, that's going to be our next tune. You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> And um, with um, Ralph, Ralph Sherry, and Mark Sherry, and we worked in in a club in in the West End, and it's there where <coughs> he met his wife, which is she was a dancer there, and and they and that's how we have Paul here. So I knew you before you were born, <laughs> before it was even a concept. That's right. <laughs> Just out of then, then yeah. we, we work in the club, mm. and then we went on variety. We used to do variety work, mm. and we, we had a, a sort of act, and we used to tour all over England, mm -hmm. and we, we played in, for the Queen, yeah, and everybody. I, I must give give you a, a, a topic about the, the, the Prince Philip. Actually, mm. we played at Goodwood uh, race course. And at the end, uh, Lord Marsh, he said, uh, we're having a barbecue for Her Majesty, and I would like you boys to play. And we said, okay. So after the races, we went, and we were around a pool, and the Queen and Prince Charles and Margaret, they were roasting their sausages, mm -hmm. something by the self and thing. But then we had a break, and we had to pass by some hedges. And when we were walking, the security now, the thing, and, and they startled us. And so, so then Prince Philip came to us and said, I saw you all got startled by the security. Um, he said, you know, you give them a job and they make a meal of it. <laughs> that, that, that's it. He's yeah. very, very, it's, you know, very humorous. And, yeah, yeah. And he, he asked me, say, where are you from? I said, well, we're from Trinidad. He saw Trinidad. I've, I've been there. And I said, well, you know, the uh, bigger steel bars there. He said, the amount doesn't count. You know, you're all doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> that was Prince. Do you, Philip? Just out of interest, though, do you, do you see yourself more as an entertainer or do you see yourself more as a musician? Which is, what, do you, what would you say? Both. Both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because we, we did it. Entertaining in in a variety, yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. then we played it, and I I remember that the first 
job we did uh, was at the Sunset Club in 1953. And um, we went there and we told the, the chap that we have this steel drum thing and we would like to play in the club. And he said, steel band, he never heard of that. He said, okay, come and do a cabaret for us on Sunday. And we went and played and everybody was, oh. And from that, we were playing there every Sunday and that's how we, we started. Yeah. And from there, we, we kicked it off. Because I, I remember back in, in the day, Sterling, when one of the things that you were really famous for that I, I never saw anybody else doing was when you were doing the pan round neck thing, I, I remember watching you do the limbo the thing too. Yes, yes. The, yeah. yes well, to, what, what, was that your idea? Yes, was, but we, we got a string and we put it on both sides mm -hmm. and, and I usually play and go under the thing, you know, mm -hmm. sort of, and, and get the crowd to get into it. Yeah, the, and so that kind, of, that kind of helped them to, to get to do, to do yes, that. that's right. Okay. And then, um, of course, in, back in, when we get to 1957, mm -hmm. Um, a really famous album that came out at the time was called Calypso by Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Do you, can you tell, what, what would you say about that for, from your point of view, well, that, that he, album? Well, he, he, he really put uh, Calypso on, on the map before that. You never used to hear anything, but mm -hmm. when um, he started and he gave it Deo, Deo, and, and Island in the Sun, it got very popular. Yeah. A lot of people knew about Calypso then. So he was very good in, in spreading the Calypso around the world. Yeah, so I guess it helped the whole pan community. That's right. the whole and thing. We, we used to play all, all these tunes, Island in the Sun, and everybody always say, Island in the Sun. And Funny you should mention that, but that's actually the next tune that we're about to play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> This is my island in the sun Where my people have toiled since time begun I may sail on many a sea These shores will always be home to me Oh, island in the sun Will to me by my father's hand All my days I will sing in praise of your forest water, your shining sand. As morning breaks, the heaven on high, I lift my heavy load to the sky. Sun comes down with a burning glow, mingles my sweat with the earth below. Oh, island in the sun, will to me by my father's hand. All my days I will sing in praise of your forest water, your shining sand. I see a man by the waterside Casting his nets to the surging tide Oh, island in the sun Will to me by my father's hand All my days I will sing in praise Of your forest water, your shining sand
lips solo carnival No more songs philosophical Oh, I learned in the sun Will to me by my father's hand All my days I will sing in praise Of your forest water, your shining sand Oh, I learned in the sun to me by my father's hand all my days I will sing in praise of your forest water your shining sand One very authentic piece of Trinidadian culture that you helped to bring to England is the Notting Hill Carnival. Can you tell us a little bit, how did that start? How did yeah. the Notting Hill Carnival start? Well, it started with a lady by the name of Ronnie Laslett. And uh, she had a children's um, carnival sort of neighborhood thing to get all the neighbors and the children together. Because in those days, you used to have a lot of riots in, in the um, in in Northern Hill Gate. And she said that she must have get the community together. Mm -hmm. And in those days we used to play in a club. And a chap by the name of um, Shervington, he knew us mm -hmm. from the clubs and, and he told Mrs. Lazard about it and she invited us to come and play for the children's carnival. Right. And three of us took our drums. Your dad, Ralph mm. Sherry, uh, Russell Sick, Henderson, and myself. The sun, it was a Sunday. We used to play in a club by the name of the Culhorn. In the Earl's, 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 yeah. Earl's Court. Mm -hmm. And we told everybody, we're going to a little um, neighborhood carnival in, in Northern Gate. Come along. So after we played, finished about two o'clock, then we ran and the crowd followed us to um, Portobello Road. Oh, he pan round neck? Yes, yeah. only uh -huh. three, three pans. Mm -hmm. And you have somebody with, with a little cowbell and thing, the Big George. <laughs> Anyhow, we start playing and, and the children disguise and with the donkey cart and, and little things. And, and I think the, 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 the fabricate had a thing. And, and we said, and then Russell said, let's take a road march. That means to move on the road. Yeah, yeah. So we started to walk down Portobello Road and the crowd started following us. And we were playing, pa pa di da pa da pa da oh, do stop the carnival. And, and we were going on. And but we said, people saying, what's that happening? And we continue and we're making it. And the crowd is getting bigger, mm -hmm. like a pie piper. And people thought it was a demonstration. Now they say, why don't you go back to your country? What are you demonstrating really? for? Really? Yes. Well, blind. Yes. Yeah. They, they, they thought it was a, But remember, we used to go and play for the, the bandy bomb marches. We then when it come down from all the masters. Mm -hmm. So they probably thought we were... We're doing a sort of demonstration. Oh, so okay. that, that, that's why. Yeah, they, that yeah. they, but they didn't know it was a carnival, you know, and we were doing our own route. It had no, no. And we passed the police station in Lando Grove and we could see them looking over the window and saying, what's happening? But we didn't get anything about, about a, a barn or kind of thing. Anyhow, that went on for years mm -hmm. and then they start organizing, they get the CDC Carnival Development Committee, and, and many people was involved in forming the Latin Hill Carnival after. Okay, yeah, and of but course, really, yeah. it was a children's carnival, right? Yeah. And now, of course, it's it's the biggest carnival in Europe. In isn't Europe, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, as a band, Solid Steel, we you know, obviously like like yourself, we yeah. we've had to you know like lots of steel bands, we play songs that. Uh, that people might know that are yeah. popular, but also we all like playing, you know, the more authentic tunes. And too. I must say that 
we used to play in a pub called the Duke of Clarence. And you played that there as a kid with your recorder. Your with a recorder. I know, it's embarrassing, but yeah, I've, now, I've still got a photograph. Yeah, it's not embarrassing, it was good. That you with, with this yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I do remember that. But yeah. um, I think the next tune we're going to play is, is an, an authentic Calypso Sterling. It's a song that's called Santa Manate. <laughs> Pan has anything to do with African culture at all, in your opinion? Is it any? Is anything African as in 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 the whole culture of uh, steel pan steel pans? Would you say? I don't think so. The the, the African culture is is skin drums. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Yeah. And um, that that's just an, another addition to the steel band. Right. You know, but the, the steel drum it started with with just West Indian culture mm, mm -hmm. incorporated with this, the African, which, which is the djembe and, and the, the conga drums right. or whatever. What right. But the steel man is definitely a West Indian um, mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. Which it, it, it just started by accident. Mm -hmm. People just went into the, and the you know. And on, on Carnival, when it first started, people would just take it up a dustbin and pump it with, with a stone and get to there and they go and play. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all, all developed. That's, how it, that's how it develops. It's, it's, it's not a skin drum no. African uh, okay. thing. I get you. So you get that straight. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, good it's to, definitely it's, it's good a, to a West Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. And of course, most of the pan players um, aren't or weren't formally trained musicians. No, no, they, they learn by, by heart, by... Um, by roads. Yeah, well. yeah, and, and they, they would play classics and all of that without knowing a note of, of, of music. It's played by ear. That's right, they okay. just learn and, and they, they, they play it like, like by ear, which now, I mean, you read music and yeah. like yourself. 
Well, I have been known to occasionally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, of, and uh, he, as I remember, he, you know, growing up playing in, in my dad's band, mm. a, lot, a lot of the musicians at the time, even then, mm. they didn't all even own all of their own instruments, did they? No, no, no. Which is, is kind of unusual. Mm. And then, and now, of course, no, steel no, bands are all over the world still. No, no, it, it's a rightful instrument in, in itself. No, Absolutely. They, they play jazz, they play classic. Mm. It's and and the tonal quality is, is good because they tune it, you know, yeah. to the correct pitch. Yeah, which in the old days they used to do it anyhow. Yeah, you know? yeah. But but now, now it, it's well regimented. It's come on, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's come on, and it's, it's, it's a, a highly tuned a, instrument. An instrument now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and of course, the steel pan is all over the world. In particular, yes. Switzerland. There's a lot of yes, steel well, pan. And that's another thing I I started. Um, playing in Switzerland in 1976. Okay. I, I went there and in Zurich mm -hmm. to play in, in a hotel and started tuning. And now there, there are hundreds of steel bands in, in, in Switzerland. Hundreds? Yes, wow. hundreds. Wow. Yeah. Some big, some small, you know. But mm. it, it's, it's, it, it's spread all over the world. Mm. Well, Japan, China, anywhere you go now, there's a steel band. It's amazing, and, isn't and it? The Japanese are very good in they go to do it some bands, you know. The, 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 they usually go to Trinidad for the panorama and play with the, with the Trinidad bands. Okay. Um I think I, I'm right in saying that you have said that you said that some of the Europeans' first reaction to steel pan music that or Taspo's music in yeah. particular, what you said is they, they thought it was black magic. Yes. And then, of the, course, in Trinidad, black magic is obe, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. The, the, they used to have the, the shango, mm. and, and up in the hills, they, they used to, because it had a time you weren't supposed to be doing the, the shango thing, only you have to go up in the hills, uh -huh. and, and you can hear the, the drums beating, but, but then it, it was against the law, you know? Mm -hmm. But then it... it now it's it's the culture it's, it's there and you can have your shango thing now they don't um, you can't get into trouble now it's because the civil rights and human rights and all that so mm -hmm. they, yeah. yeah well do you know what I've, I've I mean I could talk to you all night Sterling but mm -hmm. I think we've pretty much come to towards the end of our interview so uh, on behalf of Solid Steel and and pan players around the world I want to thank you yeah. personally for your your influence as, mm -hmm. as one of the first pioneers of, of the instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, and as, as you said, it's, it's gone from a very, from a thing that's quite small, it's yeah. all over the world now. Yeah. And um, we're going to finish with um, a song that's made, well, it was made famous by the Mighty Sparrow called Oh Be A Wedding, which I think the Desperados, mm -hmm. um, they got their first panorama win, I believe, in 1966. You're making yourself a puppy show melda. You're making yourself a bloody clown. Up and down the country looking for opia And your perspiration smells so strong well, Girl, you only wasting time Opia wedding bells won't chime And you can't catch me with the cool man see Melda, oh, you making wedding plans Different color candles that you light Rubbing red lavender in your face Well, 
Nastiness go cause your death. Ain't no man can stand your bread. You too damn nasty. Get away from me. Man, I owe you making wedding plans. Carry me name to Obia man. All you do, you can't get through. I still ain't go marry to you. A wedding ring, Melda. There are many other ways and means, like scrubbing your teeth and bathing regular. Soap and water keep you fresh and clean. Well, dress up in the latest style. Always wear a charming smile. Some kunu kunu, bound to see I do. Melda. I still ain't gonna marry to you Tight, tight, tight. All we ever knew was love and peace. Now every minute is only fight, fight, fight. Since you're using Obia Man for priest, well, you don't seem to understand. Obia can't upset me plan. For Papa Nisa is my grandfather. Mel, I won't. You're making wedding plans Carry it, my name To up your man All you do You can't get through I still ain't go marry to you Mel, I owe you making wedding plans 